my childhood was just really bumpy. Um, my parents really didn't have a lot of money and then they got split up. Uh, so I have a sister too and uh, my sister went with my dad for the majority of the time and I was with my mom. And so um, yeah, we were just really poor and um, my dad had a problem with alcohol. Um, he tend to drink pretty much his whole life since he was like 12. Um, so he really struggled with that. Uh, there was a certain point where he got so abusive that, um, long story short, he was actually sent to prison for a long period of my life. So he missed a big portion of that. And it was just my mom, my sister and I. We were in and out of foster care and just like women's shelters and um, like domestic violence shelters just to keep us safe and things like that. And so my mom kind of developed just severe mental illnesses. She just also didn't really know how to cope with things and uh, being poor and not being able to support your kids is a really hard thing. Uh, and then when I was 13, um, I hadn't heard from my dad for years, but I knew that he had moved to Oregon and gotten remarried. Um, and then when I was 13, I found out that he passed away. I wish it was harder for me in the moment, but in the moment it was kind of like relief almost um, that I was safe and he wasn't um, able to hurt us anymore. So it was hard and it was kind of weightlifting at the same time. Um, so I didn't really know him and I didn't know where he was at in his life when he passed away, but um, at his memorial, um, his wife actually told me that uh, he gave his life to Christ before he died and she kind of got to know that part of him and so um, that was a huge blessing and that took a lot of weight off my shoulders because I knew where he was. Uh, after that happened, um, it was just me and my mom at this point. My sister had moved out and um, it was just me and my mom and my mom developed all these illnesses and problems and things like that so by the time I was 15 things just weren't right and um, Jesus was introduced into my life by several of my friends kind of growing up but I never really um, understood what it meant and then when I was 15 years old my mom got so sick that she ended up running away and doing things that just kind of destroyed our relationship um, we ended up losing our apartment and everything in it <laughs> so that was really hard um, at that point I had called my grandma and my grandma is just like my absolute best friend she isn't like the grandma that has like all the money and the riches and things like that but she's just like full of love and uh, so I called my grandma and she came and um, it was at this point that I really came to kind of know who Jesus was and what he does for people. Um, my grandma is religious and so when my mom was gone, she actually ended up admitting herself into a psych ward where she was able to get the help that she needed. But I was left alone for a solid two weeks um, with my grandma here though, uh, trying to figure out what I was gonna do, where I was gonna go. So um, that was a really long two weeks and I just remember every day coming home from school, just seeing more and more of my things just being taken because my grandma didn't have a lot of money. So we ended up selling a lot of things to uh, just kind of survive for those two weeks. And one night I came home and my room was completely empty and my grandma was sitting in there. And it was at that point that I finally hit bottom. I, I was just I wasn't, I didn't have any more patience and I didn't have any more grace for anyone and I was just like emotionally just done with everything going on and my grandma sat me down and she asked me to pray and I told her no. <laughs> um, I told her that I had nothing to say to God and that I didn't know what to say to him and um, like I, I just, I could not speak, I just didn't want to at all. So my grandma, being the woman that she is, prayed anyways, and um, God showed up. And that was probably the first time that I really like felt it, for sure. The next day, actually, my grandma was like, okay, you have 
we only have a couple more days until you have to you know make a choice like are you gonna stay here somehow or come live with me and this is the amazing part <laughs> so um, this couple from my church they actually weren't able to have kids themselves and they um, heard about kind of what was going on my situation what was um, taking place and one day after school their names are Jennifer and Jason Jason met with me after school in um, my church and he was basically just like we want to take you in and we just have been feeling this from the Lord that like we should just be expecting something so um, we would like to um, take legal guardianship of you if that is what you want and I just was so overwhelmed and like like I said yes obviously um, and that was a huge blessing and that was super life-changing and at the same time um, it was really hard because I didn't know how to have two parents who were married and parents who you know had a house in their life together and were successful already and I went to a summer camp uh, that year that I moved in with them and there were a lot of things that had taken place other than this um, I had just gone through a breakup and um, I was just like oh this is really hard and life really sucks and then uh, the the message at that camp was about um, breaking your chains and how God like takes everything from you and uh, he doesn't um, he doesn't expect you to be perfect he just says come as you are and um, I really let that hit me and one night we um, wrote things down that were like weighing on our hearts and the speaker was like, I just want you to throw them in the fire and get rid of them. Um, and you never have to look at that again because that's what Jesus does for us. Like he uh, says to cast all of our anxiety on him because he cares for us. So um, I did that and I threw it in the fire and I, it was the most crazy feeling ever. I. I would, after I did that, I would think about things that it were in my past, things that really hurt, and they no longer affected me anymore. The way that Jesus just comes into your life and can completely make you a new person regardless of the mistakes you've made or the things in your life that you can't control, like Jesus really does give you a new heart and um, just create a new person. So um, that was so exciting and um, after that point I started to form my own relationship with him and try and figure out what that really looked like and I had a really good support group I had a lot of friends around me who loved me and had seen all the things that I had been through in my childhood and were just so loving and graceful and um, I would say that it wasn't until the beginning of my senior year actually where I started to really just fall in love and hunger for the Word of God and just who Jesus is and there's not a specific verse in the Bible that really like speaks to me but um, just the gospel in general. Um, the more I read it and the more that I try and pull things out of it, the more it just changes my life every single day. So um, yeah, because of that, um, I'm actually going to Northwest Nazarene University and I'm going to major in ministry and um, hopefully use the things that have happened in my life for good and um, share the gospel more with people who are hurting like I was and um, just generally reaching out to youth and people who don't know the Lord and don't know what he can do for you. Um, so yeah, that is what the Lord has done in my life. It's just absolutely crazy. My name is Marissa Rives and I'm part of a greater story.